National Summer Convention in Banawe, Ifugao. Wow. Oh, okay. That, that's a nice place. I saw the pictures. I've never been there, but I saw the pictures. Really nice. Banawe. The weather in Banawe is the same in Bagyo. Banawe. Banawe. Hello, Sister Agnes. Hello, Pastor. Hello, Hello Sister. Paul. Hello. Praise the Lord. Bakit? Bakit? Amusta na po kayo? Yeah? Paano po naman may bibigay sa'yo? Ba't ang dami? Para, kumayan mo to. Oo, oh, ano siya. Hindi natin na... Nakapagbukas ako ng ano nandito agad sa Sipanian. Hindi natin na... Ano po si Sipanian? 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 The Panaya. Panaya. The Panaya. Okay, thank you, Pastor. The <laughs> Panaya. The Panaya, yeah. Ang bukas ko si Panaya na buksan ko. Panaya. It's a nice thing. We'll wait for the rest. Nasaan kayo? Sister Weng ba yan? Sister Weng yan, ano? Nakamute ka. Nakamute ka. Nakamute na siya. Nakamute na siya. Wala pa store. Online lang. Oo. Ah, lockdown pa kayo hanggang ngayon? Hindi naman. Pero kami-kami lang ang pwedeng lumabas eh. Ah, okay, okay. So nanood na lang kayo ng broadcast namin? Oo. Yung last Sunday. Okay, okay. Si Pastor, ay si Brother Rene. Brother Rene, ang nag-twitch. Oo. Hindi para pag-twitch. At taas ko, yan. Kami wala na. Sa mga ano. Pero may mga iba, nagmamas sila. Pero kami, minsan hindi namin ako, hindi mo na ako masyadong lumalabas. Yan lang naman kami sa shop. Yan lang, mag-aano, mag-shopping lang. Hindi pa kami magpunta ng Sydney kasi, ano eh, yun ang doon sa Sydney ang marami. Oo, ganun. 30,000 pa ang mga COVID sa amin dito. Yeah. Marami pa. Just be careful. Kaya lang hindi na, hindi na nila pinapansin masyado. China is now on lockdown. Sana yung may mga picture. Ano naman? Pati ang Hong Kong passport. Kaya pati Hong Kong. Aray ko yung... Yeah, anything can change in one day. So, let's let's always be on guard. Bagay ng pasto. Bili na kami mga test pasto. Bidigay ng government sa amin. Oo. Free. That's bawat nice. ano, bawat pamilya, bawat pa, ano sa amin. Ang dami ko. <laughs> pag bipagay yung mga bata, sabi ko, ang dami sa bahay, kumuha kayo. <laughs> Kasi nga sa trabaho nila. Inagaan. You're living one day at a time. Kaya nga eh. It's okay. So, good evening everyone. It's 7 o'clock. So, can start now. Okay, Pastor. So, we're happy to have you on board again. And uh, it's good to be back home. It's been a wonderful yeah. trip uh, to Baguio. And last Sunday, uh, Brother Ulysses Chumapoy is ordained to be our resident pastor in, in Baguio. And uh, I'm thankful to the Lord because after many years of waiting and praying for God to raise up a dependable vessel, finally it has arrived. 
we did not even know that they were building a sanctuary because <laughs> it was done at the height of the pandemic. So we were not even informed about it. And we were just surprised when my son last year visited them and uh, posted a, a picture that uh, there is a sanctuary built in that area. It's actually a like a like a three or four story building and the downstairs are being rented out for people. And it's like in the first floor, the ground floor, uh, they have a kitchen. The second floor is where the sanctuary is at. And it can house it's a it's a small place of worship and it can probably house maximum of 50 people then they have a, they are trying to uh, uh, build actually a, a coffee shop on the rooftop so finally after two years we have a, a place of worship permanently in, in Baguio and our people from different provinces came. Uh, the pastors from Ifugao, Sir James from uh, Sagada, and then Sister Rose from Bontok also came. So, and then there is another group in Baguio uh, that's being not led because uh, that group has four brothers taking turns in preaching the word of God. And they came and I gave them advices on how to run their ministry. And they were affected also by what happened in the past. Uh, I'm not going to divulge the details of what happened, but the dangers of opening the door for confusion. That is one of the difficult part of my work is when I go to places and churches where confusion has been sown and I go there not only to minister but to repair the damage. So I went there and we sat down with these brothers and they asked several questions that seemingly were confusing to them and I was able to explain by the grace of God how to understand the scripture properly. And uh at least we feel that the wall of division has been removed and we did not expect them to attend the Sunday morning worship but they were there with the rest of their people so the whole place was packed that Sunday morning so that's the danger of confusion and division in the church I remember Buddy Jackson making mention when he allows ministers to stand in his pulpit and they started teaching different doctrine, it takes many months for Brother Jackson to repair the damage. So I think we have learned our lesson and I have learned my lesson. So I am very, very careful who I allow in my pulpit to minister and who to really trust because the damage can easily be done. It is like uh, when you eat food that's poisonous that damages your cell your cell can be damaged just like that like a snap of a finger but to repair the damage of your cell takes years and that is exactly what what happens when we open our doors for confusion when we fail to uh, discern the spirit so I cannot blame Apostle Paul for warning the churches not to allow anyone to preach any other doctrine than that which he had preached. Because uh, what is at stake here are the souls of people that, may, that are innocent. They may not even know what's going on. And they don't have the ability to to weigh things on their own and then when they're confused they don't know what to do with it so over the years the message in the Philippines had been plague 
with so many dissenting opinions of missionaries, preachers that has their own agenda, uh, you know, trying to make a name for themselves and such like, uh, you know, I mean, and such like. And therefore, it's a pity that the casualty and the collateral damage were the innocent souls. And therefore, uh, to you, my brothers and sisters, that's uh, listening to this voice, be careful, be discerning, and know what kind of spirit you are trying to entertain. Because the moment a seed is sown, it is hard. It is hard to recover from that downfall. I remember Paul saying uh, what Hymenaeus and Philippus have done, saying that the resurrection is over and it had shipwrecked the faith of many. Uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. And therefore, we're living in the last days and let us be discerning. Uh, therefore, John advised the believers to test every spirit. Because there are many ministers now that if you don't uh, have the ability to discern, is very deceptive. So be discerning and pray to God that He will allow you to see a spirit. I hope because the Lord has given us the anointing of a flying eagle and He will allow us to see the spirit working behind the scene. So overall, we had a wonderful ministry and wonderful trip in Baguio and next week we will be in Davao I will be conducting a three days ministerial seminar and I will it will be two sessions a day morning and afternoon morning and afternoon morning and afternoon so it will be six sessions for three days and then Pastor Edward Pastor Philander uh, Sister Edna and Sister Beth, the wife of Brother uh, Abel Dumidao, our pastor from Nueva Vizcaya, will join my trip. And then the Marcelo family also will be there. So it's going to be a, uh, you know, a little group of people that will join the trip. And then the people from Govgen, uh and then Digos, and then uh, there's another place where uh, the son of Brother Morito Pasello ministers, uh, Mandog, I think will also join. And all of the sessions will be broadcasted live <coughs> at our The Anchor Morning Devotion FD day. So it will start on Thursday morning, I think. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday morning, I asked Pastor Bumoya to be the one to take over the Sunday morning service so he can also participate. Praise the Lord. So that's, I'm giving you the report so that you will be aware of what's going on in the Philippines. At least you can remember us in your prayers. That the Lord's work here is not stagnant. We're not stagnated and COVID-19 did not prevent us from uh, working for the Lord. Uh, if if uh, government prevents us from traveling, we have the internet to yeah. communicate with people. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're thankful to the Lord. Tonight, our topic is the spirit of regeneration. There is another doctrine from the end time, and it's uh, called the Two Souls Doctrine. Another one is changing soul doctrine. Mm -hmm. All of these heretical doctrines are coming from missionaries trying to control and trying to confuse people. So uh, that is what we will be dealing with tonight. And I hope it will be a blessing to you all. If you have your Bible with you, turn with me in Titus chapter 3 as our text, base text today. Praise the Lord. So we will probably touch uh, some part of the soul teaching. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
So turn with me in verse 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. Uh, Titus, like Timothy, was Paul's son in the faith. And uh, I think he is stationed in Crete. Crete. And uh, this is also a pastoral letter, pretty much like First and Second Timothy. And Paul said, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. So Paul is referring to our former lives. That's the way we live our lives prior to our conversion. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, meaning not by our own goodness, not by our own effort. It's by God's grace that we are saved. But according to His own mercy, by the washing, remember that word, by the washing of regeneration. Okay? By the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. When you see the word R-E, okay, Re, it is a prefix which means again, like refill, renovate, restore. Okay? Something exists, needs to be filled again, repair, whatever. So the word re means again. So when you read the word washing of regeneration, it means, brothers and sisters, something needs repair. Something needs to be restored. And renewal, okay? Renewal or renewing is uh, a process by which that which was pure and was tainted needs to be restored back to its original condition. That is the meaning of the word renewal. Like when you have your passport and then it expires, the moment your passport expires, it's good for nothing. But the moment it's renewed, then it has the power of entry. You use it as your access and your token to enter anywhere you want to go outside the country of your origin. So the word renewal is to bring back to its original condition. So if the Bible says that there is a regeneration and a renewal, then what is inside of you is not being replaced. It is not being replaced with another soul. It's still the old soul, okay, but it needs to be renewed, okay? Uh, you know what happened in the book of Genesis, of course. We go back there in Genesis 1, 26. Praise the Lord. When the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image. The image that is being mentioned here is your soul. Right. That is the original you. Okay, your soul is God's design of what character you will have. And your soul is patterned and designed after the image of God or the characteristics of God. If God is godly, pure, righteous, holy, so are you as well. Okay, and then it says, after our likeness, what is the likeness of God? God is a spirit. Okay? God is a spirit. So a human being possesses two 
composition prior to his earthly existence. He is composed of a soul and a spirit. The soul is your image and the spirit is what gives life to the soul. Okay? And your soul is the real you. Not this face, but what is inside this vessel of clay. Amen. And then you read in Genesis 2.7 that the image or the soul that God created, He put it inside the human flesh and man became a living soul. That is the breath of life. So, we don't know the gap between Genesis 1, 26 to 28 to Genesis 2, 7. We don't know how long it took God to create the human body. Because Genesis 2, 7 is the creation of your human body. Okay? Our human body came from the dust. And then the soul and spirit created by God in Genesis 1, 27 was fused into the human body and then when all of these three compositions are fused in, okay, then now the soul created by God can now function in the physical world by the means of the human body. So the body is God's means so that the soul can operate in the physical world. Brothers and sisters. So when the Bible mentions regeneration, it has nothing to do with your face. It has something to do with your soul. Because God is not changing your face now. Whatever you do, this body will corrupt, will age, and will go into... Uh, uh, mortality. It will experience mortality. It will experience death. So God is not God is not concerned now with your body. I mean, because He's gonna change it eventually, give you a, an immortal body when the rapture comes. So when we go to Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse seventeen, a very familiar verse. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Right? <clears throat> it says here, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Remember now, that does not happen overnight. Right? Your being new creation starts when you are born again that is the beginning but that is not the end when the bible says you are a new creation in christ all things are passed away behold all things are new paul is looking at it from a complete picture but to reach the finality of your being a new creation you have to use titus chapter 3 the process of regeneration and renewal. And then when God is done with you, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, you are truly a new creation. Question is, what is being removed from you and, and, and me? Turn with me in Galatians chapter 5. Or I mean, yeah, we'll see in Galatians 5. What is being removed? Brothers and sisters, let us read in Galatians 5.19. This is what is being removed and taken away in process. Okay? It says here, now the works of the flesh are evident. Now, when it says the works of the flesh... The flesh cannot display these images without the soul. Remember now, right? So whatever the flesh is displaying, it does not originate from the flesh itself. It comes from the soul. 
So when the Bible says the works of the flesh, okay, it is the soul in its downgraded capacity. The soul is now manifesting a fallen nature images. That is the meaning of the works of the flesh. Okay? It's earthbound, it's earthy, it's sensual. But it is not from the flesh itself. It comes from the soul. But the flesh is the one expressing, brothers and sisters, a downgraded, a fallen images after the fall of Adam and Eve. Okay, so when you read the works of the flesh, it's not this one. It's what is inside of you. If you recall, we will read later in Romans chapter 7. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, revelries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you as I warn you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right? That is the capacity of the fallen nature to express after the fall. That is what you will see in a fallen man being displayed. Even Paul admitted that. Turn with me in Romans chapter 7. Okay? Praise the Lord. Let's read in verse 14. Romans 7, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am of the flesh. So when Paul uses the word I am of the flesh, he's not actually talking about the body. He's talking about the soul, again I will repeat, in its downgraded condition. Alright? And that is what is needed to be restored. Because the only thing that is now being expressed by the body, which is not supposed to be, is that downgraded character. Okay, so when you talk about the flesh, which is the normal notion, people only see this. Okay, this uh, flesh right here. But no, the flesh in itself cannot express anything without the soul dictating what it should express. You follow me? I, I am repeating it so that it will stick with you. Brothers and sisters, Hallelujah. Soul under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. Question is, where does it come from? Okay? For I do not for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do that I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. What is what is Paul saying here? The purpose of the law is to expose the sinfulness of man. All right? That man is basically a transgressor. Man is basically a law giver. If you tell him, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, that is what he will do. All right? And Paul is saying that. That if he continues to be a lawbreaker, then he is in agreement with the law. Because that is the purpose of the law. To expose, brothers and sisters, how uh, deprived, or depraved, not deprived, depraved, depravity from the world. Okay? How depraved man has become. Right? So now it is no longer I who do it. Listen to this. Who's doing it? Okay? But sin that dwells in me. Where is that sin dwelling? In the flesh? No, in the soul. That flesh 
It's just a reflection of what's in the inside. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Okay? So now it is, uh, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me. Alright? That is an honest confession. That nothing good dwells in me. What, what, Paul, what is Paul saying? Nothing in his own effort will please God. Alright? Because whatever he does will not pass the standard of the Almighty God. That's the reason why we are not saved by works. Our works and righteousness is nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of God. And therefore, our salvation and the goodness that we can expose is a borrowed righteousness. Hallelujah. Right? It is an imputed righteousness. Not from ourselves. How did we display this righteousness? It is by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is an imputed righteousness the moment we accept Christ as our Savior then that righteousness which was in Christ is imputed upon us and we become acceptable before the Almighty God. That being absent, nothing you do is acceptable before the Lord. So that is what Paul is saying, nothing good dwells in me. Not that he was a bad person, but his own good works will never, brothers and sisters, pass the standard of God when you talk about salvation. Because your good works is nothing but filthy rags. Because if by doing good works you can be saved, then God does not need for Christ to come and redeem us by His blood. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. Again, He's not talking about this thing. Talking about a fallen nature. Right? For I have the desire to do what is right, but the ability to carry it out. But not the ability to carry it. Why? Because the flesh has become, I mean, the soul has succumbed. The soul has given. The soul is now depraved and it is only reacting to the desires of the physical world all right it's almost like this if i will veil my face brothers and sisters all right the only thing i see is the veil beyond it i cannot see anything okay the purpose of your soul that is your means of communion with god okay the only spiritual aspect of you is your soul all right your soul is made in heaven but your flesh is made here on earth that's why it says dust you came dust you shall return that is what God said to Adam but our only connection to the divine is now dumping all right it's now dumping it's now blind the only thing the soul sees is the flesh. Right. What the flesh needs, what the flesh desires, and what is good for the flesh. Mm -hmm. Can you see me? Can you understand me? Right. right? So, it cannot go beyond the desires of the flesh. That's why Paul says, the ability to carry out is not present. That's the reason why when you are saved, that veil is removed, isn't it? According to 2 Corinthians 3, that veil is now removed in Christ. Meaning, your soul is not just seeing the physical, your soul is now seeing the spiritual. Amen. Okay. Your soul can now penetrate into the divine. You are now communing with God in the spirit. So when the Bible says you are translated, from darkness into light, you did not travel not even an inch. No. How were you translated? By means of the new birth. You are now translated.
but you are not moving an inch. How did it happen? Meaning, the veil is now removed, you can now penetrate into the heavenly places and understand spiritual and heavenly things. So your soul is not just bound to the flesh, your soul is not just bound to the physical world, now the real function of your soul and the purpose it was created by God is now operating properly. Thank because you. the purpose of the soul is to commune and get one to be in oneness with the one who created it so you can have communion with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. We're getting deeper here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Now if I do not, now if I do what I do not want, okay, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. So there is now, you know, the old nature and the, and the new nature is having a battle. And the battle is not in the outside. The battle is now in the inside. And therefore, that part, that fallen nature, is what that process of regeneration is working on. All right? It is like two, two pieces of paper that's glued together, and now it's being removed. The old nature is being removed one by one, process by process, and it's hurting. Yeah, amen. <laughs> All right? It's hurting. There is a spiritual surgery that's going on. Brothers and sisters, have you seen a, like a twin? What do, what do you call a twin that's connected together? Yeah. What is the, what, what's the term to that? Uh, no. Twin, but their bodies are connected. Yeah. There is a term for that. Siamese. Siamese, is that the term? Siamese, yeah. Okay, now. It's like that, all right? Now, if they want to be separated, there has to be a surgical operation, okay? A surgery for them to be separated. And that is what the Holy Spirit is doing inside of us. A separation of the old nature and the new nature. But Paul, what I like in Paul, is his admittance that this is not easy it's a struggle and this is actually where our struggle comes from this is where stubbornness this is where disobedience this is where our human rational comes in when we're separating because the old man wants to come back okay let, let, let us read okay for i find it to be a law that when i want to do right evil lies close at hand so, you know, you want to serve the Lord, but the old man is pushing you back, brothers and sisters, okay? The old man is trying to bring back the pleasures, okay, the desires and all of these things. So it's a struggle, all right? It's a struggle. And the only thing that you can do is really total surrender, okay? Total surrender is all it takes for the Holy Spirit to really effectively operate the process of regeneration. It says here, for I delight in the law of God in my inner being. You see? Mm, yeah. What is that inner being? The soul. It delights in that. But I see in my members, hallelujah, another law waging war against the law of my mind. Yeah. Okay? And making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Okay? Hallelujah. What is the meaning of that? Right? That is <clears throat> what Paul is saying. The flesh wants to captivate his mind. Okay? The desire of earthly pleasure wants to captivate his mind. Bringing it into captivity. Right? Right? Wretched man that I am who will deliver me deliver me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that when I when I myself serve the law of God with my mind but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. 
What is the meaning of that? Does it mean that Paul is a sinner? No. He is giving you the reality of the battle we all face. Yes. That it is a continuing battle. That this flesh will never desire God. Okay? The old nature will never desire God. But now, we are empowered. There is now a power dwelling within us to resist that we will not be totally held captive by this desire. That's why in verse 25, Paul says, the rejoinder, okay, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of God. And remember now, hallelujah, the brain is the main frame. If your brain is serving the law of God, then you are empowered and the flesh can now hallelujah bring the desires of the flesh into total control that is why in Romans 12 it says be transformed by the renewing of the mind okay so if the mind serves the law of God and if you win the battle in your mind the flesh will follow so even if the flesh wants to desire sin, brothers and sisters, the mind, which is the main frame, the one controlling everything, brothers and sisters, can now dictate that the flesh cannot take control. Amen. Right? No matter how it desires to live in the pleasures of sin, but if the mind serves the laws of God, then you have an antidote. You are now empowered not to totally live in sin. All right, so now let's go to the regeneration process. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. All right, now let's go to Romans chapter 8, first, oh, no, no, uh, first Peter. The one, let's see. Oh no, I think it's in Second Peter. Excuse me, church. Yeah, Second Peter, chapter one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1. Let us begin reading in uh, verse 4. By which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. All right. Now, if you're familiar with Brother Branham's pyramid of the statue of a perfect man, all of these images and characteristics is what you will see in them. Okay, but I told the people in Baguio, remember now, the pyramid is not even in the Bible. It is Brother Branham's illustration. Okay, because the pyramid in Egypt is perfect in all of its measurement. Right? But Brother Banam is not the first one to use the pyramid. Clarence Larkins in 1912 already were using it. So Brother Banam may have, may have taken some of his ideas. Okay? If you will read Revelation, which is the New Jerusalem, the measurement and the shape of the New Jerusalem is not a pyramid. It's a cube. The New Jerusalem's uh, uh, measurement is not like this. It's not like this. It's a cube. All sides equal. Brothers and sisters, it's not a pyramid. All right? But a pyramid or a cube, it's a symbol of perfection. Brothers and sisters, all right? That's a symbol of perfection. It's just an illustration. 
It's not a big deal. I don't know why the end time message people are making a big deal out of the pyramid. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Uh, if, the, if the pyramid is very important, Moses that lived in Egypt could have written about it. Amen. If, if it is something of value, Amen. you know, he would have mentioned it in his five books. All right. Now, the divine nature. What is the divine nature? The divine nature is your soul in its original form. That is your divine nature. Brothers and sisters, why is it divine? Because its origin is from heaven, from yeah. God himself. Did he not say, let us create man after our image? If man's image is created and patterned and fashioned uh, after the image of God, then it has to be divine. But you know what happened? It became corrupted uh, after the sin of Adam and Eve. And now by the process of regeneration, it is being restored, brothers and sisters. And what are those divine nature? All right. Partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Okay. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith Meaning, add to your faith. Add to your faith. Brothers and sisters, the faith is the foundation. That's the base. And then from the base, these characters, brothers and sisters, are mounting up. Okay, it's building up. All right? What should you add from your faith? Knowledge. I mean, uh, supplement your faith with virtue. Okay, what is virtue? Virtue, brothers and sisters, is the ability to speak words that has power. And the virtue, brothers and sisters, comes from our exampleship. When you speak and people believe, there is virtue in what you speak because they see an example. That is where virtue comes in. And of course, all right, it came from the Holy Spirit. But the question can be asked, do you have virtue before? Yes. All of these images already existed in your soul. Are you following me? Amen. All of these things, it was already there, but it was not functioning. All right, because the veil is unlifted. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is doing, it is quickening those dead characteristics that was laying dormant in your, in your soul for many, many years. So the Holy Spirit, what it is doing is, is quickening it. Quickening means making it alive. All right? The Holy Spirit is like, like like your charger. When your phone is dead and you put a charger and you hook it up to the power source, then it makes alive. All right? So the Holy Spirit is like that. It's your connection so that it, you, 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 uh, what is dead inside of you can be made alive. So those characteristics is already there. It is just being quickened because it was laying dormant. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Virtue, and with virtue, knowledge. And with knowledge, self-control. And self-control, steadfastness. Steadfastness, godliness. And godliness, brotherly affection. And brotherly affection, love, which is agape love, divine love. All right, now. All of these things, as I've said, is already there inside of you. Sometimes, even before you became a Christian, some of these characteristics are trying to express itself, but not in totality. Okay? You're not aware of it. 
Okay, but you know what is good even before you became a Christian. You know what is evil even before you became a Christian. But we are more on the evil side than on the good side. Okay? Hallelujah. You have brotherly love before. Before you even became a Christian. There are instances you are able to restrain yourself. That's self-control. There were times that you loved the unlovable. But it's not working in its full capacity. Why? Because we are being, brothers and sisters, uh, overwhelmed by our human desire, by our earthly ambition, and therefore all of these images is being dampened. It's not working and, and operating properly. Now with the power of the Holy Ghost, it is being made alive. Okay? It is what becomes dominant. It is becoming more. Okay, that is what you're now expressing. It is not just here and there. No, you're now living it. You're now expressing it. You are now showing it. It is not just uh, uh, little by little. It has become a lifestyle and part of you. And it is actually you. All of this is now you. Okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. This is now you, brothers and sisters. Now, when you look at the image in the mirror, let's, let's read the Second Corinthians. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 3. All right? Verse 18. The moment you become liberated and the veil is lifted, okay, this is what you're going to see. The, and we all with unveiled face That is the face the, is this face mm -hmm. literal face your literal face mm -hmm. <laughs> no the face is your soul all right the face that Paul is saying here is your soul created after the image of God now without veil it is now removed you can now see with more clarity because the mist, the mist, hallelujah, of vagueness, of shadow, okay? But as it is, is now removed. Now your soul can fully understand and fully operate in its full capacity. What is it doing? And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? And who is the glory of the Lord? <laughs> Jesus Christ, isn't it? Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ is the glory of the Lord. We see God expressed in Christ, brothers and sisters. Okay? Now we can fully understand. And what did God express in Christ? Redemption. Okay? You try to see it and now you understand it. And now you are being transformed into that very same image. It says here, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. Here you go again. And what is that image? That is the image created in Genesis 1, 27 and 28. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's like a merry-go-round. Yes. You go back to the beginning, brothers and sisters. Now I know, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> you. Go back to the beginning, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Okay? You are being transformed into the same image. So the, remember now, the face is not this face. It's the soul. All right? Because this face literally is not unveiled. Uh, it's not veiled. Yeah. It was the soul that was veiled. Amen. It was the soul that was prevented from operating properly in its full capacity and the purpose why it was created so it can communicate with its creator. Now it's hopper. But now with unveiled face, we can now see the glory of the Lord. And we are now being transformed. That is the reason why, my friend, how can you live like the pattern of the world 
when their soul is veiled. Mm. Why do we want to copy the lifestyle of the worldly people when they leave brothers and sisters with veiled faces? They only see the flesh. They are only functioning brothers and sisters with the flesh because their soul is veiled. They cannot see anything other than the flesh. That's why when you talk to unregenerated, unsaved, non-born again Christian, what normally comes out from their mouth? Their car, their yeah. house, their dreams, their achievements, their son's achievements, and all of the things that they were able to accumulate and 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 and, and achieve in this life. Right. And Nothing about God. <laughs> to them, talking about God. Boring. Yes. See? Boring. To, they don't enjoy it. They don't enjoy this kind of a conversation. <laughs> But the moment you become a Christian, you don't enjoy their conversation. Right. Amen. This is what we enjoy. Amen. Okay? Thank you. So now we have a different lifestyle. So why copy the lifestyle of people whose soul is still covered? Whose soul is still veiled? whose soul is still under the influence of the old nature. Why do we want to live like them? When they should be the one living like us. Because this is the purpose why our soul was created. Right. See? Imagine that their, their, their ambition and their goal, they think is highest ambition. It's all earthly. How can it be highest when it's just nothing but earthly? Right. Can it be highest? The highest is to get connected with the, with the one who created the heaven and the earth and the one who created our soul. That is the highest, Amen. brothers and sisters. Because you're not connecting with the earth, you're connecting with the divine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine that. See? Mm. All the wars created by <laughs> dictators and tyrants. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, brothers and sisters, it's all because of flesh. What is going on in Russia? It's all about the flesh. It's all about physical. It's all about territory. It's all about the material thing. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. But we we were past that. We our our understanding goes beyond that. Okay, mm. goes beyond that. But we don't live in that kind of a lifestyle anymore. Brothers and sisters, our real joy is to commune, brothers and sisters, with the one who created the heaven and the earth. Imagine when a person reads all books, they will, they will, they will, they will cry, oh, I have read so many books. <laughs> Solomon, in all of his wisdom, says all of those things are vanity. Right. Amen. <laughs> huh? Thank you, Lord. Who is a man that's wiser than Solomon? I mean, of course, aside from Jesus, okay? But mm -hmm. Solomon have reached the zenith, the top. Okay? What, what a human being can possibly achieve in this earthly life, Solomon got it all. Women, glory, money, power, knowledge, he's got it all. But mm -hmm. he gave the conclusion, all of this, are vanity, meaningless. Mm. Meaningless. Meaningless. And then he, he made the conclusion in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, what is the whole duty of man? Is to fear God and keep His commandments for this is the whole duty or this is the whole purpose why man was created. Amen. Why man was Amen. given a soul. Is that he can commune with his maker. It's like the E.T., the original E.T. You have seen, have you seen the movie E.T.? The finger connecting? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen the painting of Leonardo da Vinci in the Sistine Chapel? Ah, huh? the finger of God and the finger of man connecting. But do you know, it's really not connected. Okay. If you use a, micros uh, a microscope, you will see that there is a thin line. That is how clever Leonardo da Vinci was. 
There is a thin line that separates God from man. That is what happened in the Garden of Eden. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Through Christ, we are reconnected. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. You are not reconnected with Duterte, with, with the royal family, with anything that's earthy. You're connected to the source, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> the Lord. So ask yourself, who are you? What kind of creature are you? That the one who created the heavens and earth claims you as his own. Right? Sometimes we, we, we look at ourselves and say, Oh, I am an insignificant, good for nothing. In the, you're not. <laughs> you're not. That is what Satan wants to inject in you that you're good for nothing. You're not good for nothing. Because God has given you the spirit of adoption, claiming you to be his own, and gave you the, the, the right to call him Abba. Abba. Abba means father. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? That is what this all things is really all about. Brothers and sisters, to be restored back to the divine. Mm. All right? Hallelujah. And therefore, it says here, we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed. If you're being transformed, it's not like this. It's a process. Transformation takes time. Right, amen. All right, it takes time. Are being transformed into the same image. Have you heard the word copycat? Mm. Huh? Yeah. Copycat means to copy someone. Mm. All right, I remember when, when, when Elvis Presley was, you know, the big thing. Everybody wants to look like him. When the Beatles was the big thing, everybody want to look like the Beatles. See, every human being, even today, they are idolizing and they are, they have someone they look up to and they want to look like them, dress like them, talk like them, and be like them. You know, it, it's, it's like being somebody else's person. We're being a capital. We are a reflection of someone else. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters. When I was young, I want to look like my dad. I want to talk like my dad. Because my dad was my idol. Brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. All of us can agree that there is someone we look up to. And we want to be like them. The world, you have people like uh, Bill Gates. People like uh, Warren Buffett. These are the iconic figure, the the iconic figure of what success really means. All right, and everybody wants to be like them. That is the goal of a a, a, a depraved mind. That is the goal of a, a a fleshly mind. That is the aim of a man that's only living in the flesh. But that is not us, my friends. Our highest goal is what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3. Let's go there. And I will end there. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So let us not... <laughs> Be envious. <laughs> if your friends show off his new car, this thing and that, don't feel jealous about it. Amen. Just be happy for them. Yeah. <laughs> because God has already transformed you and you're not thinking the way they think. Yeah. Okay? The veil is now removed, my friend. God sets you apart and now you have a different aim and goal in life and this is it read with me in philippians chapter 3 blessed be the name of the lord as i will finish my talk tonight in verse 14 this should be the goal of every believer it says here i press on toward the goal for the price of the high 
calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh my. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is what Paul's goal is. He pressed toward the high mark, the goal of the high mark of God's calling that is in Christ Jesus. People think to become a president is the highest calling. To become this and to become that is the highest calling. No, that is earthy. <laughs> it's nothing. It will fade away. This calling that's given to us and we're pressing towards it, it will never fade away. It has an eternal value. Thank you, Lord. Imagine that. And now you're wondering why our trials is heavy, why our persecution is heavy, why there's so much burden. You know why? We're paying the price. Brothers and sisters, imagine now in the Philippines, two, two months from now, we're going to have a national election. How much money are they spending just to be in office for six years? Mm -hmm. The president will have to spend like a billion pesos to be elected only for six years in office. Imagine that. How long are you going to be ruling this earth? The moment Christ comes back, you're going to be ruling for a thousand years. My golly. You're going to be seated with Christ and ruling this earth with him for a thousand years. And we're complaining? <laughs> We are, we, we are complaining about discomfort and all of these things that we're experiencing. No. We are being groomed for that which is to come for you and I. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So let us be thankful to God because what is happening to us now is we are being regenerated. The soul is having a spiritual overhaul. Yes. So that it can be restored back to its proper and original condition. And as we are being renewed, brothers and sisters, it's like the glass, the mirror that is dark and that is that's full of mist, that is vague, is now being cleaned. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Right? Is removing all of the vagueness and all of the mist and all of the clouds and all of the smoke, and all of the veil, and everything that hinders us from seeing things clearly. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Until Amen. we behold the glory of God, Hallelujah. and we actually see the purpose of our existence, brothers and sisters. Yes. Now I understand. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So nothing people does makes you jealous, makes you envious because you know who you are and what you are before the almighty God. That is Amen. The, and Amen. do not depart from that calling which we're with God has called us. Stay on the right course, brothers and sisters. All right? Stay on the right course. You have a goal. You have a line to follow. You have a path to follow. Fulfill that. All right? Thank you fulfill that brothers and sisters and that is the only way your life becomes meaningful not the way the world dictates it as God dictates it not as the world you know uh, uh, wants to give opinion about how you live your life no it is about the opinion of God and what really matters before the Almighty God so today there is no such thing as changing of the soul. There is no such thing as replacing your soul or new soul. It's the old soul being renewed and transformed. And one day when God is done with you and I, you will have the image of Christ, the image of our elder brother, the same image that was there in the beginning when God created your soul in Genesis 1, 27 and 28. It was deprived. But now it's being restored, it's being empowered, it's being made alive again. So the character that was laying dormant there is now functioning and now manifesting in your life through this human body. Thank you. So do not feel discouraged if once in a while you fall down, 
if once in a while it seems like you're not changing, no. You are, we are all a work in progress. We are still in God's conveyor. God is not yet done with you and I. And I remember by the Bonham's message, the masterpiece. Right? The masterpiece. One day God will unveil his masterpiece. And his masterpiece is none other than you and me. Amen. Imagine yourself. I will close with this. Imagine yourself. Who am I that God is mindful of me? That God is like a great sculpture chiseling me. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Because his plan in his mind before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Is to create a masterpiece. And that Amen. masterpiece is me. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I am a masterpiece in the eyes of the Almighty God. So when God is done with me, he will unveil us. According to Paul's revelation, the children of God will be fully manifested. And that will happen when you and I will be introduced to the people of the world in the great millennium time. And you then live your life as the Lord desires you to live, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't feel discouraged. Don't feel down. Don't feel you're, you, you, you're abandoned. No, God is working in you. He is busy, actually. <laughs> He's busy with you. And he's to me, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God is not uh, slack. God is not uh, working on the sideline. No, he is busy transforming you and I. But that is what God is seeing himself about. You. He's busy of you. <laughs> transforming you to the image of his son. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. The world, the world we're living in today, pandemic, wars, yep. corruption. This is the fallen image. Yep. This is the fruits. These are the fruits of the fallen image of man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And it's gonna be repaired eventually. But God will repair it yes. soon. What God is repairing now is you and me. So be encouraged. God loves you and is my name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time of fellowship. May you bless my brothers and sisters. Be with them, Lord. Help them build their faith up, O oh God. And help us to face our tomorrow with courage, with boldness. Totally depending upon the Almighty Father. Yes. Lord, we know we're living in an evil age. It is going into corruption. And Lord, the world is ignorant. They do not know because their soul is now still veiled. But we thank you, Lord, because you have removed that veil. And we can openly see your purpose in our lives, Almighty God. Lord, I pray that my brothers and sisters will press on and no matter how hard it is oh god uh this walk will be you will empower us you will help us overcome our flesh our weaknesses oh lord you will empower your people oh god help yeah. us lord we are totally surrendering everything to you almighty father and if there's anyone here that are sick right now we pray for healing oh god Yes. Yes. We pray for complete healing, Lord. Oh. Let there be healing even amongst our loved ones, our parents that are yes. sick, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be a divine healing, supernatural healing, Lord. 
Yeah. Blessed, and if there's anyone here that needs monetary and financial assistance, Lord, may you open yes. doors of opportunity for them, Lord, so yes. they can be provided, Almighty God. Lord, we remember the people that are suffering in Ukraine. Lord, there's so many people, millions of people are displaced right now. We pray, Lord, may you just be with them, oh God. We don't know how long this war is going to be, but we know it's part of the signs of thy soon return, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that one day the pain and the sorrow will end. And you will wipe away the tears from our eyes. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to live the calling that you have placed upon our lives, O God. And may we stay faithful and on the right course, not looking on the right and on the left. But we are just glued with one vision, and that is the high mark of the calling of it that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks. Give you glory and may your blessing be upon my brothers and my sisters, Lord. I pray in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray, Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I pass up Paco. I pass up. I pass up Paco. Nagarini na yung uniform. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye Thank you for joining. It was a good fellowship, brothers and sisters. Yes, it is. Always, always. Okay, bye bye. Bye. See you again. Good night, everyone. Good morning. Good night, Filipina. Bye. Bye. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude done the war.